Hey, welcome everyone. My name's Kerry Wheeland. I'm the current chair of the Board of Advisors at Collins College, and I want to welcome you today's, to today's panel discussion. Uh, after introducing our panel, I'm going to cover the role of the board uh, or some of the things that we do at Collins College, and then we're going to provide some insight to the student questionnaire that was done earlier this spring. By the way, I want to share my sincere thanks with uh, that goes out to uh, Drake Rubalcaba, a senior at Collins that I'm mentoring this year and who helped put the questionnaire together earlier this spring. And the panel will cover three questions uh, that multiple students asked in that survey and we'll close with a Q&A session. Uh, we wanna be cognizant of your time and so we're gonna try to close by 1250. It's not a lot of time, but uh, please know that we really do wanna hear your questions. So if anything comes up, don't hesitate, put it in the, you know, uh, the comment bar. And uh, without uh, further ado, let me go to the next page here. Our first panelist is Stephanie Edens, who is the Senior Director of Business Development at Every Table. Uh, and she's been a Board of uh, Advisors member since 2018. Next is Salvador Falcon, who is the Vice President for Corporate Accounts of, for the Southwest for Ecolab. And uh, Sal has been on the board since 2014. And finally, Javier Cano, who is the Vice President and Market General Manager at the Ritz-Carlton in the JW Marriott at LA Live. And uh, Javier is the senior member of the group having joined the board in 2013. So uh, with that, just to share a little bit about the Board of Advisors, Collins College works hand in hand with the Board of Advisors. Key hospitality leaders, leaders that ensure the program's methods and practices are consistent with the industry and that its curriculum is aligned with industry needs. Board members are advocates for the college in the hospitality industry. Board mentorships and internships uh, provide Collins College students with opportunities to benefit firsthand uh, from the experience, knowledge of this expert group and invaluable assets in building the hospitality leaders, hospitality leaders for the future. Uh, so we did this student questionnaire a few weeks back. Some of you may have participated. We had a total of 167 participants. Student emphasis uh, that participated, 39% came from events, 32% came from hotel and lodging, only 12% came from food and beverage. Now I've got to work on that a little bit. We've got to get those numbers up next year. And then 17% were other. Uh, the majority asked really in terms of what the Board of Advisors could do for them. It's really around career readiness. And that's the three questions that we've chosen today uh, are based on that. So with that, we will start with question one. What would be your number one piece of advice for us as students as we prepare for our future careers in the industry? And so... Uh, let me start with Stephanie. Would you take a little time and share your thoughts on that question, please? Yeah, absolutely, Carrie. Um, thanks for having us on the panel. Appreciate being here. Hello to all that are on. And number one piece of advice was a little bit um, challenging because I have a lot of advice, but I think <laughs> number one piece of advice is just don't limit yourself. You know, try, experience, experiment in different aspects of the industry. Um, my background, I am a dietetics major that went into work in hotels, ended up in food service, catering, special events, back on the food service side. So don't feel that if your major says events or your major says food and beverage, Carrie and I need more of you, um, that you have to stick with that path. You can certainly adapt and your experience will translate across many, many different channels within the hospitality industry. So keep your, keep your options open. That's great. Sal, how about you? I'll, um, <clears throat> I'll follow that and say, yes, Stephanie's right. Keep your options open. Be open to uh, perhaps a different path. You know, I started in hospitality in the hotel industry. Never did I ever think I would be um, selling chemistry or chemicals and working for Ecolab. 32 years later, I'm still here. So um, be open, stay focused, and um, 
network is probably the thing that I would highly always recommend. It doesn't matter whether it's in the class that you're in, network within those associates around you. When you have a part-time job or a full-time job and you're sitting at the employee's lounge network from, you know, if it's somebody from the front of the house, back of the house, you never know when in the future you would need or call upon somebody to either help you open the door or you may have a need to be able to recruiting someone uh, down the road as well. So network can never hurt you. It would always help you. Excellent. Thanks, Sal. Javier. Uh, thanks, Kerry. Well, I'm going to build uh, a little bit off of what uh, both of the prior speakers said. Uh, I think that um, it is important to know that when you get started in our industry, uh, you, you have no idea where you're going to end up. I, I, uh, people have started off in different places. I think if you ask each of us what our first jobs were, and if we ever had a, a thought that, that, like Sal said, you know, X number of years later, you'd end up in the position you're in now, we just wouldn't know that. So, you know, I, I would add, tell you as a piece of advice, and I agree with Stephanie, it's hard just to keep you on, but I, I would say to you that you, the, this idea of remaining flexible, uh, of uh, using your skills such as networking, what Sal said is you never know where the conversation with someone may lead to an opportunity that you just hadn't either thought about or don't realize that somebody is looking at you and say, you know, you could be somebody that would fit you know, X, Y, Z position that I have. And so you have, you always want to be able to have that conversation with one more person because you never know where it can lead to. So if you think of this as a highway, there are a zillion off ramps and the ramps just lead on a different road. So the roads are, are just, there's a different road for every person. It's not the same for everyone. So to me, the key is flexibility and just keep your eyes open because you never know when the opportunity is going to come and where it can come from. Absolutely. That's great. Okay, we will jump to question two. And by the way, uh, I believe we're going to have some time. So don't hesitate, you know, anyone that, you know, if you're writing down notes here to come back and ask more specific questions, if there's something you heard or you made a mental note. So uh, please know there will be time at the end to ask plenty of questions and we don't have to stay just to these three. Carrie, yeah. uh, uh, Dr. Dobson has asked if Sal could maybe give a little bit of background of what Ecolab is for students who aren't as aware. Oh, very good. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, thank you, Leah. Great idea. So um, Ecolab is the largest um, company in the world that provides cleaning and sanitation solutions to the hospitality industry. Now, hospitality is very large to the industry itself, but within that, there are many other um, uh, parts or needs that require chemistry for disinfection, for sanitation, and to keep everything moving forward to where we, as chefs, as cooks, put on a plate, right? We have a food and beverage division. We are the largest um, company that uh, treats water right, whether it be mining um, for oil or even for energy. So um, we're a uh, large company that basically circles the customer with different offerings. And you'd be surprised how many times by you going into a grocery store, you going into a restaurant or into a hotel, how many times Ecolab has, has touched where you either walked on, touched, or uh, the plate or the soda, the wine that you may be drinking. That's great. Thank you, Sal. Uh, number, question number two, how can I land in the, a job in my field after graduation? And so, uh, Sal, we'll start with you on that one. <clears throat> well, obviously, I think that all of you, being on the hospitality college, you have a passion for helping, right? So, um, if your emphasis is front of the house, then continue down that path. You know, seek out opportunities um, and uh, apply for opportunities to that. But don't be um, closed-minded and shut a door too quickly where it may give you an opportunity to be uh, a supervisor or someone behind the house. Many times, a lot of us start in back of the house 
and find a way back in front of the house or vice versa. If, if you only want to cook, it might not be your time to be the sous chef or right in the line. It might be you being a, a prep cook where you're not, you know, in display doing what you want to, your, your dream of creating, you know, beautiful, fantastic, wonderful tasting food. It might be you starting off as executive steward, assistant steward, where it'll open up a door, at least you being close to the culinary side, if a chef or a cook is what your uh, dream is. Great. Javier. Yeah, I think uh, I, I would imagine that a few months ago, uh, if you talked to, about the idea of getting a job in your field after graduation, the prospects did not look very good, right? In the midst of this pandemic, uh, people of not hiring people and, and it's like, this is not looking good. So you fast forward to today and uh, I called the dean up here not that long ago and I, I said, look, I, the, the winds are changing. And uh, what we're seeing right now is that the occupancies, at least on the hotel side, are growing pretty significantly, pretty quickly. Uh, so what does that mean? What does that translate to? It translates as there's going to be jobs available. There are going to be jobs open uh, when you graduate. Uh, the, the challenge is going to be that uh, the traditional manner by which people hire people and traditional jobs that, that existed prior to the pandemic uh, aren't there, and it may look very different. So uh, my suggestion to you is get a job, get in, and then the organizations are all going to be moving in very rapidly to afford you the opportunity to continue to move up. Uh, I, I can tell you that there are countless numbers of jobs that are out there. Uh, they may not look like training program or may not look like a, an entry level this or that. But there are a number of them, and I would encourage you very much so to, to get in, get in the door. Um, we all started in, in, uh, at, the, uh, at all different positions. My first job was a front desk clerk. And um, you know, 40 some odd years later, I've had the opportunity to work in different countries and had a number of different hotels and, and now uh, responsible for Merritt Hotels here in Los Angeles in addition to my own. And I can tell you, across the board, every hotel is, is uh, looking to hire people. So uh, I, I would say to you, you know, take a look uh, and uh, just get in. That would be the, my, my advice to you to start going forward. Great. Thank you, Javier. Stephanie. Uh, advice that um, Sal and Javier have given is great and spot on, definitely. I would also say to really invest in your time at the Collins College, not only in the classroom, obviously your um, sort of learn by doing experiences are available through the campus as well. But when you take a look at your summers, and I know a lot of you hold jobs during the school year as well, which is very commendable and challenging, but how can you position yourself in areas that will then build that resume? I think us as employers, if we step out for a minute and look at who we're looking to hire and whatnot, we're looking for those that have invested in their careers early on. Um, the college degree is fabulous and it's gonna open a lot of doors for you, but I think the work experience and whether that's work, whether that's volunteer, whether that's unpaid internships along the way, just to gain the experience that you want, I think those are really, really crucial. It'll also give you a better base coming into it. And um, I'll speak to our events folks. So I, I did own my own event company for about 12 years. And when I was looking to hire and partner with those, um, those that had a variety of experiences that had really gone out and looked for opportunities to participate in events along the way, again, whether it was a volunteer, whether it was a paid position or anything in between, um, that sort of was very attractive to me because events are challenging by all means, and it takes a sort of certain breed to be able to, um, to work in that industry. And it showed me that the people had made that investment in themselves to understand that they were following a path that they really had the passion for um, and continue to have that passion throughout as they build their careers. And again, whatever avenue it takes, but at least that um, you all have invested some time to really explore before just taking that first job necessarily. That's great, thank you, Stephanie. I, uh, to add on to what everybody has said, I, I believe 
it's going to be a very interesting time in hospitality post pandemic. I think there will be a renaissance uh, in front of us and there's, there's not a better time. I think there's going to be positions open uh, that are going to need to be filled. And those people that have that passion for hospitality and wanting to be in the industry, there are going to be some great opportunities. So uh, there are going to be plenty of jobs out there in my view. Okay, we will go to question number three, which is, once I graduate, let me go up, hold on here. Once I graduate, in your opinion, what would be the best way to accelerate my career? And uh, with that, Javier, I'll let you start there, please. All right, thank you, Kerry. Uh, I would tell you that, um, you know, there's various uh, different things that you can do to accelerate your career. I think a couple of them that I think are important are that uh, you take an opportunity to take risks, uh, you know, that uh, it, you are not going to make bad decisions along the way. There will be opportunities to do a lot of different things, but I would take risks. If there is something that's out there that it's a job that you think, okay, might be a bit of a stretch, just go for it. Uh, you know, I, I look back on my career and if I had to do something over again, uh, I was working for Marriott and I, I didn't uh, take a job out of town as quickly as I should have. I wish I would have taken that uh, first job sooner uh, and uh, it just opened up a lot more opportunities to be able to do things. The more flexible you can remain, uh, the uh, greater the opportunities I think that will uh, be out there for you. The other thing to keep in mind is that you know, it, no, no jobs are easy. You, you're going to have to work hard. That's just given. It comes with every industry, every job, and ours is no different. Uh, and I think that there's this idea of work-life balance that, that needs to be addressed. I mean, our industry is one where we work hard and we, you know, frequently requires long hours. But I think the idea there is that uh, I, I don't view it as work-life balance. I work, I view it as work-life choices. I think that people choose to invest either themselves or in a period of time where you're going to work a little more for as a means to an end. And that end could be another job, a different location, um, a, a, something that you would like to attain. So uh, never lose sight of the fact that you are working hard for a reason. And that reason has got to be one that you go into a job knowing. You know, there are many times when I, I made the decision, I'm going, to, I'm going to put a lot of time and effort into this particular job because I want the next one. And I think that that is to me something that you want to keep an eye on when you make your choices in terms of how you're going to spend your time and where you're going to spend it. Thank you, Javier. Great. Stephanie. Yeah, I think there's so I'll much opportunity here. Um, so a, a couple pieces of advice, I suppose. Number one, Sal mentioned, Javier mentioned your network. Um, I was, you know, encourage the network and continue to build that. Um, every position I've had in the last many, many years has been through the network. It hasn't necessarily been applying to a job. So then I would also, and I know many of you have taken advantage of us as mentors on the board, um, definitely have mentors in your life, whether it's in your workplace or outside of your workplace. Um, I've heard that called your personal brand, uh, personal board of directors, which I think is a great way to look at it too. And having people that know you from different aspects of your life, know you from your educational experience, from your work experience, just in terms of friends, family, that sort of thing. Um, we all need external advice to get us through um, certain times and to help us guide our path as well. Um, the other thing to do is, um, and I think this is what Javier was mentioning too, is you may have an opportunity to join an organization in a role that is not quite the one you thought you were going to have, but I've done it a couple times and I have to say it always works out if you can persevere in that position and just get in there and show them who you are. Um, I definitely recommend being proactive. You really own your career. You're not just a part of a process. And the more that you, um, once again, invest in it, you definitely will get more out of it. I think at times it takes a little patience. I think we're all, you know, want to just keep advancing, advancing, advancing as quickly as we can. And it's important to assure that you've got the foundation that you need to get to that next role to be successful. 
there's no harm in failing. I've done that a few times too. There's no harm in failing, but the more you can build your foundation and build your skill set and really have that confidence that you're ready for the next level, I think that also will provide you with um, the ability to accelerate your career at a pace that's appropriate. You're, you're ready for that next step. Um, being thrown into the next position, not being ready is not, not a great feeling at times. So getting yourself as ready as you can along the way. But I think the number one is have that, have that group of mentors and your network around you to help you find your way you know, through it and give you the encouragement or give you the sound advice of, no, maybe not right now. So. Excellent, excellent advice, Stephanie. Okay, Sal, all yours. Well, um, well, Stephanie, Javier mentioned uh, a lot what I was going to say, but I, I would say the other thing that you're in charge of is the attitude you bring, right? Whether it's in class today, your work during the summer, your part-time job, it's the attitude uh, that you give to your professors, right, to those around you. Um, I would highly recommend, you know, be positive, be open-minded, accept that challenge that your professor, your mentor, your, uh, your significant other, your parents, and your manager at one time, right? Separate yourself. That's what's going to create separation and leaders within the field that you're going to go to are going to identify you as a person with potential is how you receive being giving that position that perhaps perhaps wasn't what you wanted to do but you overcome it and it will even make you stronger because it wasn't what you wanted to do but you were given that opportunity you challenged yourself did it with a positive attitude and it will help you not only in that position but those around you will notice it and it will help you for two positions down the road. Um, you know, we all um, uh, look at each other in the mirror, right? Before you walk out of the house, before you get out of your car, smile. That <laughs> alone is a big, big step forward. So uh, uh, it's, those are my two cents. That's great counsel, Sal. I think this question elicited a lot of great stuff and it. You know, when I think about it, Javier talks about risks and being flexible and Stephanie talks about, you know, networking and your mentors and what Sal said about positive. I think what I would offer up is, you know, you're at the precipice when you think about graduating from college and going into a career. And, and you know, my counsel along those lines is just be a sponge and soak it up and really recognize, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about being on the board at the Collins College because I think hospitality is such a marvelous career. And some people are cut out for it. Some people may not be cut out for it, but if you're cut out for it, you don't worry, you, you seriously won't work a day in your life if you're doing it. And as Sal says, your feet hit the ground in the morning and you know, your mind is made up, it's gonna be a great day. And uh, again, my counsel is at this point in your career, going into a new career, it's just being that sponge and having kind of this bias for action. If somebody asks you to do something, grab it and go for it. So uh, that, that's my thoughts. So with that, that concludes the three questions we've got. It's right at uh, 1230. We've got another 15, 20 minutes left. I would love uh, for you to please uh, ask any questions that you'd like. I also want to share that uh, if there are questions following this panel discussion that you might have, you can uh, you can certainly reach me through LinkedIn or through the college, and I'd be glad to follow up on any questions you might have. So with that, Anne, do you have some folks out there asking questions? Yeah, we have Jason in the in the chat who asked for uh, Mr. Cano. How has the Ritz Carlton and JW adapted its revenue management strategy through the pandemic? And what steps, what steps can urban hotels typically relied heavily on business travel due to increased rev par when travel demand starts to increase again? Yeah, good question. I think what's happened is that everybody has to constantly be in the state of being flexible, right? So as the uh, environment change, you've got to change. Landscape change, you've got to change. So what's happened is that there's no more group business. 
and you know, we're a, a thousand room group hotel, big ballrooms, and we can't do any group business. So all of a sudden that's gone. And uh, then we cater to a lot of traveling business uh, people and that's gone. So in order to be successful, you know, we've got to reinvent ourselves. So now what we're doing is the only people that are traveling are people that are traveling for leisure business. So for leisure business, um, what we've done is we have realigned all of our strategies around creating a leisure environment. So what does that mean? That means we've gotten uh, all of us uh, in industry have worked in different types of hotels, myself included. I've worked at, uh, I've ran a, a resort, worked at a couple others. So use a lot of the resort background and saying, okay, what kind of things can we do that would create a product that people would be willing to say, even though you're in an urban environment, you can't get any more urban than downtown LA. So we're creating an urban resort, which gives you a lot of different things that you can do while being here and still not leave the building. And so we position ourselves in that way. We create revenue management strategies based on trying to leverage the time when we do have business, which is on weekends. And I tell you, we're fortunate enough that this past weekend, we actually hit 600 occupied rooms, which is the most we've wow. hit since last March. Um, so we definitely see the business starting to come back at least on weekends and then slowly starting to fill the rest of the week. Excellent. So if you'd like to either raise your, use your raise the hand button or put your question in the chat. We can uh, make sure that we can call on you. Albert, go ahead. Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time. Um, I have a question regarding uh, motivating your, your staff. I went to a hotel recently, and I noticed that the housekeeping can't enter to the rooms to clean them during the time that the person's staying there. So once the, the guest leaves, like I left, I left a lot of extra trash because the the housekeeping wasn't able to enter. Now it's taking longer for them to clean. So how, how do we keep them motivated to still kind of do their job and kind of do it quicker? Because now it is taking longer to do their regular job. Well, if you don't mind, I can give the, the kind of angle from the hotel side. Um, I think that uh, motivation of staff is something that never stops, right? It doesn't matter if it's good times or bad times. You know, we are, uh, we get things done through the work of other people. And in order to get up, uh, make sure that other people are able to do their job well, we have to inspire them. And, you know, we start by understanding that every job is important. We are a team and every single position, no matter what it is, has got enormous value to the overall uh, operation of what we do. Uh, somebody doesn't do their job, no matter which one it is, it, the whole thing doesn't work. So when you take a look at, at uh, some of the changing patterns that have happened with COVID, we're not in rooms as much anymore. We have to talk to people behind shields and be, talk to people behind masks. We've had to figure out other ways to be warm and inviting uh, with a mask on. And, and a lot of that is how do we talk to people, our posture, other things that we have to work on. Uh, for guest rooms, you know, for example, you mentioned that, that uh, people have to work harder. The reality is that they're doing some things now they didn't do before, but they're doing a lot of things. That they're not doing a lot of things that we used to do. So we don't get in the rooms as much. Um, we are not, uh, for example, we're not uh, uh, changing linens all the time as we did in the past. Uh, there are other things that we used to do, again, that you know, we, we used to have full mini bars and we used to have other things that were in rooms that they're not in there anymore. So many, much of the time that's spent uh, doing uh, what we're doing now uh, replaces thing, time that was spent on things that they did before. So it really boils down to inspiration, motivation, uh, and that, that never ceases, no matter what the job, what the environment, and, and uh, what's going on at the moment. If I may, I'll, let me uh, tackle it on what we're doing at Ecolab. So I would say a lot of our customers, like the Ritz, the JW, um, all of our customers, all the restaurants that um, have been doing the right thing, right? So we at Ecolab, um, have been asked by so many large customers to do joint press releases that they were utilizing um, uh, the, the correct product, the correct chemistry, the right procedures, and they have been doing it, right? So we came out with a certification, I'm sure maybe on your uh, 
on your media. You've seen it on a couple of times that it's been on, on TV as well. And we're doing another commercial about it, but we're trying to reinforce and make sure that the guests are comfortable coming back to the hotels, coming back to the restaurant industry, that they know that our customers, the operators are doing the right thing. Um, you're gonna start seeing the seal. I changed my background. Uh, a lot of the seals are gonna be posted out there. Equal have signed certified, meaning that that place of business has been certified by a third party that they have the correct procedures in place, that they have everything required as far as the chemistry. Uh, then it's hospital grade chemistry too as well. So uh, we're trying to help reinforce. And then the other thing too, on this right now, you will find that our uh, housekeepers, our guest attendants, they're the ones that are really taking, uh, 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 tackling on a lot more because as you check into a room, now you're questioning, you're looking at the phone, the remote control, the restrooms, a lot more different than we all did in the past, right? The dishwasher, and I would say the housekeeper probably are the most important, um, and they were always, but now they just been elevated to a whole nother level. Thank you. Um, Catherine has a question about work-life balance. And I heard um, the term of a work-life blend versus a work-life balance. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I know I refer to work-life choices uh, because, <laughs> because at the end of the day, you choose whether or not you want to be in a position where either you're working more or working less. And so everything you do is a means to an end. So uh, there are times where I chose to take a job on that I knew was going to take a lot of my time, but I wasn't going to do it forever. And maybe it was a year, maybe it was a year and a half, but at the end of which I was able to get a, a job, which was a very different job, which didn't involve that. Now, you know, I'm at a point in my career where I, my work-life choices are much, much different. Uh, but I think everybody makes those along the way. You all make your choices and, and you choose to go into or take a job that says, okay, this is what the expectation here is, but you're not going to do it forever. And it's a step to get into something else. Everything is on a path of a career. It may take you a different way, it may uncover something else along the way, but don't be afraid to make worth life choices that says, okay, I choose to work a little harder right now. Or likewise, the opposite. I choose at this point in my time not, not to have this, this burden of this type of a position and choose one that fits that. Uh, I would agree with Javier. Um, you know, I've been 32 years with Ecolab. I can assure you that I worked a lot harder physically when I first started than I do today. <laughs> I may spend a lot more hours today on the phone and in too many meetings, right? But it's a different balance from when I first started. So um, Javier is correct. It's a decision that we all have to make, right? Sacrifices, personal sacrifices uh, have to be done. And a lot of that personal sacrifice is time away from your family and loved ones. But if there's a payout down the road, I assure you and guarantee you that you're going to appreciate you and in investing that time, the additional energy that you did for that period amount of time that it not only has given you what you have down the road, but also it opened up more doors or different paths for you in your career path. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Margie Jones has a question about taking risks and being willing to fail. How do you recommend students present how they've taken risks or failed in a way that's viewed as positive by recruiters and managers? I'm happy to take that one. I think it's, um, it's a great question and you won't learn if you don't fail. You, you have to get in, put yourself in a situation that's a little bit beyond, and sometimes that failure is external circumstances and has nothing to do with you. But um, I think if you present it in terms of what you learned from that experience and that failure, what you would repeat, maybe you take the same risk again, and it was just an organization that wasn't meant to thrive. You did your best, 
you learned a lot from them and you moved on and these are the three things you took with you. Um, I think as long as you position it in terms of a learning experience, your takeaways, what you would do again, what you wouldn't do again, what you learned from that, um, those, those sorts of failures, you're just building experience. That's really what you're doing. Um, and that failure can come in a variety of different ways. It can be just, uh, I was promoted one time into a position. I failed miserably. I was horrible at it. I went to my boss begging to be put me back into my old role, which luckily I could do. Um, I've been with organizations that have failed. Um, I, probably a contributing factor was part of me and the role that I had, but you know, you can take those lessons and you can really share them in, in such a way that shows that you are uh, flexible, which we've talked a lot about. You haven't really put yourself into this very, very constricted path. You've taken that um, leap of faith and where you came out on the other side. I will add that risk are building blocks. Um, and many times we feel that it's not the right position, the right job. Um, yeah, I'll share with you. I, I was once also promoted and where I was offered the position and I try to uh, debate as to why I didn't have to take that position because I felt I already had done what that role was gonna allow me to learn and um, uh, teach me. However, I am to this day, those leaders that, that gave me the, that position, I admit to them and I did it for two years. It was the best position that helped me develop me for the other roles that I have had since then. So, um, uh, you know, uh, Javier is correct. It's a risk that you've got to take and the benefits many times that will come out of it, you will uh, reek rewards from it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a believer in uh, inspirational quotes. You know, uh, I, just, I just looked this up, you know, Tommy Lasorda said, you know, people are gonna make mistakes. That's why they put erasers on pencils. <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, when you think about that, uh, Tommy Lasorda also said this, you gotta love what you're doing no matter what it is, whatever you undertake in life, if you don't love it, you don't enjoy it, you're making a big mistake. And quite frankly, I think those of us in hospitality, you got to love it. If you don't love it, you can tell if a person doesn't love their job, right? That's the other reason that I'm excited about being part of this, the board of advisors at Collins College, because I think, uh, you know, if you love what you're doing, people can tell. And I think, you know, that's a big part of the puzzle. Anyway, I probably took us off on the wrong stream, but I, I just thought I'd mention that. That was great. Anastasia asks, how do you approach your supervisors in an effort to take on more of a leading role or more of a challenging position and help advocate for yourself? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say a couple things. Number one, your actions are always going to speak louder than words. So it would be uh, no matter what you do, be great at it. It doesn't matter what position you have. You don't want to be good. You don't want to be okay. You want to be great. And uh, when you set the bar very high for yourself, people notice that. Also, volunteer for things. You know, there, there are a lot of tasks that are going to come up in a job that you have, some that people don't like doing. I, I volunteered for everything. When I first got in my first jobs, I knew I was competing for, with a lot of other people for future jobs. I, I volunteered for everything. It didn't matter. And people will absolutely notice that if you're willing to uh, don't have a hesitation to do something and you've got a, uh, a willingness to try hard. And then I think the, the final one is something Sal brought up early on, have a great attitude. You have a hundred percent in control of your own attitude exactly. and, and, and you choose that attitude every single day. So I would tell you to choose a great one and you have uh, people are going to notice people are going to pay attention and that's, that's how I think you get a, a lot of attention to what people are interested in looking for someone for the future. Great counsel. Robert asks, how would you advise students who are currently in a position to pursue a leadership role in an organization, but their availability constricts their, re their time? Look, I think we've all been in that position. Uh, you know, early on, 
I was going to school uh, at the same time I was working. And then, uh, you know, I got married, had a child, working, school, all this together. That, that really didn't mean I could put 100% into the job. I was, you had other things that were priorities. So you're always going to have uh, priorities that are going to be, that are uh, going to be uh, at, uh, at odds with each other. So I, I think what you do is you get yourself in a position when the opportunity presents itself and you're ready to move ahead with it. It's okay to, uh, to do, uh, get a job and maintain for a little bit. You pause for a little bit. You take a side trip for a little bit. All those things are perfectly okay for when the time and the opportunity does when you can then accelerate and put more emphasis and more time on the particular uh, job that you're in or the career, different career choice. Career is going to be around. It's not going anywhere. It'll wait for you. You know what, Javier? That's great counsel. I was just thinking, we're in this society where I want it now. And I think those that take time and wait and recognize that the world can flip. I mean, look what's happened in the last year just with the pandemic. But as I look back over the years in terms of positions that have been available or positions that I wish I could have had, you know what? They came available in their own time frame. They may not be in yours, but they will come available. And the issue is, are you going to be ready to grab them when they are? Or something different or something better, potentially. Or, there you go. Mm -hmm. There's exactly. always a second chance. Yep. Deanna asks, what is something that has been added into the workplace because of COVID that will continue into the future because of the positive impact it's had on guests or in your daily work life? Oh, I, I, I would jump in just to say technology, mm -hmm. mobile order entry, touchless, those things are going to be with us forever. And uh, I, I think that's the thing in, in terms of my business, that's the thing that really stands out. Yeah, I agree. It's I think it's take, I'm sorry, go ahead, Stephanie. I was just saying, I'll just do a shameless plug for uh, every table. I think um, safely <laughs> packaged prepared foods are going to be there forever too. Sorry, buffets. <laughs> People don't want a lot of points of contact. That's right. I would just add that I think that um, many of the directions that we're going to go in the future are going to be shaped by the people that are on this call. As you start to go into the workplace, you're going to see things, you're going to see opportunities. You know, technology is going to lead the way in many, many cases, but you're going to see an opportunity. Somebody in this, on this call is going to look at it and go, why don't we do X, Y, or Z? And you know, you, you create a product or invent something that improves the experience for the customer. It, we're an evolutionary industry. That's All right. along the way, we continue to evolve by the great works that people do. People see something, an opportunity, and, and uh, that's where I think that a lot of the opportunity may lie in the future. That's right. That's my one counsel is when when you hear the words, that's not that's not the way we do it here. That's you know that that should re send up a red flag or you know we've never done it that way because I think Javier's right. We are in evolution, very much so. Sacred cows make the best burgers. <laughs> All right, and then we have a question from Tommy. He says, as leaders in the hospitality industry, how do you deal with difficult coworkers who, who do not like to collaborate? What would you do to encourage them to be more committed? Wow, good question. Me, me. Okay. All right, so <laughs> look, I think what happens is th this is this is always gonna be the case, no matter what. I mean, I guarantee you that you work on work groups where you probably have somebody in your work group that's not pulling their weight, or is just not committed, that's not going to change. There's going to be people along the way that are not going to feel good about where they're at. Some of it may be that they, they think that this is the field they should be in, and it's not. And so I think that something Carrie said early on is you've got to be happy at what you do. I love coming into work every day. I, I could not, I don't think of it at work. I, I, I love what I do, and I have a passion for it. And so the idea oftentimes with somebody who is not committed is they're doing something they're not passionate about. And yeah. I think that having an opportunity and don't shy away from having a conversation with somebody who says, are you happy? You know, if you're not happy, don't do this. Find something you're happy at. And that's what re really we find a lot of people that, it, and, it, and it sometimes may not be one 
of the particular alleys of our business and maybe one of the uh, uh, something that is, that's uh, a tangent to what we do, but it still may be well within the, the, the whole in hospitality industry. There's so much that's out there. So I think that people frequently find themselves in a position where it isn't exactly what they want to be doing. And it shows. You're, look, we're not that good that we can't keep uh, other people from knowing that when we're not, something isn't, uh, when you're not happy about something or don't feel good about being in a place. Yeah. Hey, I would, I would at this point put in a shameless plug. I'm a big believer, by the way, in a gentleman named Simon Sinek, who's a great writer. And, uh, you know, I think I would encourage anybody to read, you know, Leaders Eat Last or, you know, uh, the, the book on why. But uh, one of the things he just said, and I'll leave it with this, great leaders give everyone something to believe in, not something to do. And I think young people are motivated by people that they like to work for. I would love to work for Sal or Javier or Stephanie because I look to them as leaders that would say, look, here's where we're going. Here's a vision we're following. And that's the other thing that I would encourage you to do. Get within an organization that you really believe has a future and there's excitement on the horizon for you. So, Anne. Thank you, Carrie. We are right at 1251. So thank you so much uh, to all, all of you um, for your wonderful insight and to all the wonderful students who attended and for the questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you.